Hello everybody, I hope you're doing okay. Welcome to somewhere near Rowledge in the Surrey Hampshire border. Now the Boston 12, I thought I'd do a bit of a good point, bad point after my first run. Well I'm actually mid-run, that's why I'm rather sweaty. I've done about six miles, did a race yesterday so it's been a bit of a steady plod. So the first good point, well they do my size, UK 13 and a half, that's good. Bad point, couldn't need get any discount so you had to pay the full whack 140 pounds which seems a bit ridiculous actually for a shoe like this because it will probably be discounted to sort of 80 pounds in a few months time so <laughs> maybe i'll sell myself short there a bit i do like the, the color is a good point matches my nike top not very well cause laces am i bad point is that the well depending how you view it those laces there are rather long aren't they so that does rather imply that it's a good point if you've got fairly wide feet because when i put these on initially i did feel that they were sort of quite narrow but when i've actually put them on feet and tried to run them i realized i had to tie them up a lot more so i've already got my sort of standard the tongue is almost touching which is why the laces are so long so they've got a reasonable lockdown here but they do feel a lot wider when they've actually put them on foot so i've had to tie in the laces a lot here it feels a bit like the sort of the zoom fly three or some sort of trail shoe like the pegasus trail these sort of tie-ins here that sort of wrap the foot quite nicely but you really do have to spend some time adjusting the laces. Another good point is they've shed some weight since the Boston 11 and depending on how you view it it's actually this light strike 2 foam is softer so it does have a lot softer feel than the Boston 11 which isn't necessarily a good point or a bad point depending how you like but I think most people these days like a soft shoe. A bad point is I've just gone on a bit of trail here and it was quite rutted and the fact it was quite high stack and the soft foam at the back made it quite unstable so not really a shoe that like the old days of the Bostons that you could take them out on all surfaces. I think this would be a bit of a disappointment off-road. Another bad point I thought though it's got the Light Strike Pro at the front there. I did feel it was rather sort of bottom heavy in terms of like all the cushioning was towards the rear. I tend to sort of toe off so I found that I was sort of feeling my toes a bit. I think a good point of this one is probably going to be that it's going to be a reasonable standard daily trainer for getting in the miles when you want to pick up a bit of pace but I certainly don't think it's going to be like a workout shoe or a race shoe like the Boston used to be up to nine but I certainly think that it is put a sort of more promising than the 10 and 11 but it's kind of different and I think you've got to like a bit of a softer feel I think it's a bit more accommodating to wider feet normally with shoes when I've worn them a few times the tongues tend to sort of come in so I'm hoping that will kind of work out. Here's the outsole there. I think, well, it's the Continental. People all say that Adidas outsoles are good. But as I said, on that off-road trail, the fact that the stack made it a bit unstable. So I think however good a tr outsole is, it's not much use if you're, you've you got a squidgy stack. So I think this is, is going to be very much a road shoe. But if you have to do a bit of trail, then, well, you're not going to be too out of sorts but just need to be careful like any off-road bit of terrain i think i guess a good point is it very much a shoe styled like the adios pro 3 with the carbon rods there i'm not sure if they're carbon rods or plastic rods i'll have to put up on the top whether they've found out but of course when you're wearing this shoe you don't know whether they're carbon or plastic do they? you just sort of see the road ahead you don't see what's under you <laughs> perhaps another bad point is that i've been doing some runs in the adios pro 3 it's fairly similar to this just sort of steady miles and they feel sort of like a lot nicer. So yeah, in all in all, um, not too bad. I'm not sure that I really want to have paid £140 for it. I think if I'd had got a discount, I would have been a bit happier, but I've got the Adios 8 to come and the Takini Sen 9. So look out for some first thoughts on that. And maybe I'll do a shoe off with all of them. Because I remember I did three years ago, I did a shoe off in all the Adidas Adidas Zero shoes at the time and they all came out basically the same but i think there's quite a lot of differentiation now this is certainly the heavier one it's about 340 grams in my size the adios 8 i measured at 273 and the Takumi Sen 9 the lightest at 255 so there's a bit of differentiation there and certainly this does now feel like more like a daily trainer than ever it was it's sort of like an up-tempo shoe although i think it's borderline up-tempo shoe but i would certainly put it in the daily trainer category yeah. Oh, well, Pegasus Ilk, but it's certainly a bit softer than the Pegasus, I think. Okay, so I hope you found this little first look interesting. I'll be sure to do more testing, and as I said, with those other Adidas shoes, like and subscribe, all of that, and see you on the next one. Bye! Well, now I've got to put my shoe back on, because I'll be standing here with one foot. Which is actually getting quite uncomfortable, and it's actually getting dark, but at least you can see actually out and about. I'm about a mile and a bit from the car, so... Uh, yeah <laughs> real world testing as it were just a little post trip i've taken my shoes off and i found that my socks have gone green i'm not quite sure if that's the shoes or some of them had some grass stains but uh, yeah look out for that and think that must be the shoe surely